Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I attempted to go uh, fight the uh, invaders, but I guess Madir counted as the... Um, like the boss of that area so <clears throat> I lost them forever unfortunately um, first one was Alva uh, next to the Zully's stuff the other one was a silver knight named um, uh, what's his name but he was a friend of Havel the Rock and he had this cool hammer that could collect rocks on the ground and throw them at you he was the one that Judicator Argo summoned um, but it's cool because it makes you think about Silver Knights being individualized, because um, you kind of think of them as somewhat of a fodder enemy. And then the last one was uh, um, um, as I said, I Igon, and he's 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 I'm upset of his because he drops um, a the the thing that he trained Arena on the uh, the. What do you call it? Blindfold. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. The blindfold that I guess trained her to become a uh, 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 firekeeper or whatever. So I figure we'll just come here and we'll fight the final boss, who happens to be uh, Dark or sl Slave Knight. Gale, the uncle of the painting girl in the painted world. Um, so I'm going to do this real quick. This guy's probably going to go run over there, but you can see here. Oh, Help me, please. The red. Hood is come to eat us. The red hood is coming it's to eat us. Our dark soul. So you can see he's got a crown. He's the exact same proportions as um Lilianor. Help me. He's the same proportions as uh um Ludlith, for sure. Very small torso or very small legs, but a normal sized torso. And uh, here we find I hope it's evident from my name that I'm going to be watching all cutscenes for these people that join me. Because my name's Lore Through on this, that's my save file. What still here? So in the same position we met him in in the Cathedral of the Deep, he is handed over that thing, your dark soul. For my lady's painting. This is probably another one that you should never hit twice. Except for key moments, I suppose. <coughs> Look, this is probably fine. Positioning attack. 
you just oh I didn't dodge in time. You just don't want to be there close to him when he like starts that move because it's just so No, when you stagger him like that, you can definitely hit him twice. Yeah, there we go. I should have gone away from that. He's got the Marakumo. That's cool. phase. He's got three phases this fight. We can see the black blood. Uh, is this the blood? The blood of the dark soul. Yeah. It's a cool arena too, the court of the pygmy lords. Oh! He disappears? I've never seen that. What the? Oh, that was greedy. Oh, nice hit. It's a weird, like, audio thing going on. <sighs> Gotta dodge sideways. Okay, now I get to his third phase. <laughs> and... My phantom did not do that at all. Oh my god. So those things all land on the ground and that causes lightning to emerge from those areas. Losing like half of the audio. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I think we got this. Oops. I do like that move. Nice. Oops. Yeah, we're missing like half the sound effects for some reason. I love that move. I mean, not because it's hard to avoid and stuff, but it's like, it's just cool looking.
In this case, I don't mind that my guy is not really. Oh! There's some multiplayer glitch going on here because this is just weird. But I think we got him. <laughs> it's probably lagging or something on his side. He doesn't even know we beat him. Okay, so we get the soul of Slave Knight Gale and the blood of the Dark Soul. The only thing is that, uh, <coughs> I don't think Ludlith had any of these, like, long hair. So maybe that's just the hair of the, of, like, the lord. So maybe he wasn't a lord. Um, but yeah, it looks like there was, like, one, two, three, four, I mean, one, two three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight crawling over there. So presumably there would have been like a whole ring of them? I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a couple things to take care of here. Um, where am I going? Where is this? Where is Philianor? Oh, right, right, right. Philianor is there. So as soon as we progress this through time, Shira is no longer in the chapel in the Ring City because we've kind of moved forward time here and she kind of comes here. First, let's deal with this Ring Knight who still exists. I think the moveset is definitely different for this guy than the other guy. Okay, there's the, like the second move. But still, it's just so not aggressive compared... Yeah, the sound is all weird. Hopefully when I transport myself, it'll be whatever. So we get a chunk from him, but also a slab. It is interesting to me that that pygmy uh, king, pygmy lord, was asking Filianor for help that Gale is trying to kill him. Um, and yeah, we have we have some stuff to talk about with Gale and all stuff. We haven't read the descriptions and stuff, but I'm just trying to take care of everything before we move on. But I'll read those before we do the next thing. I've searched for thee, dark, stricken creature. I am Shira. Daughter, of, Daughter of, the of the Duke. Descendant of gods and trusted friend to Medea. At once, I am the honor of the gods, the glory of fire, and the fear of the dark. 
Thou shalt not go unpunished for thy treachery, thy profanity, and thy shameless yearning. Don't die. Um. So she's a descendant of of Seath and someone else, who is a god. The Seath was a duke. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't a god. Oh, you still have more, do you? Get out of the corner. She's got an interesting story too, though. Never would I ever forgive thy lowly kind. Crucifix of the Mad King. A cross spear hung with a malformed corpse. Once a mad king was born to the pygmy royalty, and Shira, knight of Filianor, put him to rest. But Shira's cross spear, unable to kill the undying king, only pinned itself to him. Shira delivered them together to a dark room, where she stayed and held them close. So it seems that she, when she said she was a prisoner before... Mm. died or something I don't know what my controller is not responding hold on um okay we can't use this but we can see Huh, it is really strange what we think what this actually is but anyway she said that she was locked or she was a captive oh look at my souls 413 412 she was a captive of the church or whatever and it's probably because she in order to protect Filianor killed the mad king and it didn't kill him. It couldn't kill him. So she decided to take the uh, spear and trap themselves in a dark room so it wouldn't harm anything. Is my guess. And one more thing before we read everything and then go on. I mean, because it's arbitrary, I don't know why I don't just read it, but. I feel like I'm trying to, like, finish up everything in this area, read it as the final thing, and then move on to the next story point. find this. So now that we've killed her in the future, I guess, for some reason the chapel is open, which is clearly not a dark room. But we can get her stuff and read about it. Crown of Shira, knight in service to Filianor, finely crafted with silver and fashioned with a pearl from a man-eater shell. Um, is that the, are those the, you know, the clams, Dark Souls 1? Shira delivered the crucified Mad King to a dark room where she stayed in her former wire, even though none would see her. 
with a spun gold shawl draped over the silver breastplate and a green woven skirt. This armor offers a subdued yet refined elegance, apropos to both a handmaiden of the princess and one who veins coarse with royal blood. I'm sure there's like a lot of discussion about what that could be, who she is. Um, but I haven't heard much and I don't know. I don't know if it's meant to be known, but maybe she's Filionor's daughter? Seath and Filion? I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know where Seath would be based on what happened in Dark Souls 2. Which I'm still not even convinced that's the way it seems. Because at one point there's a thing that looks like it could be Seath, but then it also looks like that ancient dragon, which was then kill like recreated and I don't know. I feel like it's intentionally messy. Um, the red hooded wandering slave knight Gale sought the blood of the dark soul as pigment for the painted world but gale knew he was no champion that the dark soul would likely ruin him and that he had little hope of a safe return blood of the dark soul that seeped from the hole within slave knight gale used as pigment by his lady in ariando to depict a painted world. When Gale came upon the pygmy lords, he discovered that their blood had long ago dried and so consumed the dark soul. So it was almost like it was fated to be. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, uh, so... <coughs> his... He wanted the blood of the Dark Soul, whatever that means. I mean, it seems like there's new concepts coming into this every day. But he wanted the blood of the Dark Soul so that he could create the new world of in Ariandel after it was burning. Which is in itself a microcosm of what happens with this bigger world. And so it all comes down to this. Like, the, the last, like... Um, the last DLC of the game, the last content of the game has you finding the blood of the Dark Soul, that is, blood that was of those that had the Dark Soul. And... Oh, he's just gone. Um... Um, and gives it to, and, we're, and he was intending to give it to the painter in order to paint a new world for that painted world. Like, that's what it all comes down to here. It's very interesting. And now we can see that the world has progressed nicely with burning. Um, I think it's just the chapel. Like, it obviously takes a long time to burn. This isn't a time-based thing, either. I think this is killing Gale. But let's deliver the Dark Soul, or the blood of the Dark Soul, to... This is, this is an offspring of, uh, of the Duke as well. Most likely. As she looks like the daughter of Priscilla, Priscilla was an off. She was a crossbreed with probably Velka and the Duke. So that's kind of interesting. Tied to Shira. Let's talk to her first. Ashen One, thy gift of flame has taken root, and Uncle Gale will soon bring the pigment. Mm. Pigment. Colored like the dark soul of man. Uh, he's not coming back. I wonder if Uncle Gale has found it. The pigment colored like the dark soul of man. 
At the time that this is in comparison to then, probably not, actually. I wonder. But I have it. My thanks, Ashen One. With this, will I paint a world. Please tell me thy name. I would name this painting after thee. I have no name. I see. We are much alike. Then I will name this painting Ash. It will be a cold... After Frida. ...dark and very gentle place. And one day, it will make someone a goodly home. So I like the implication here. <laughs> that we cannot... Well, we're going to do our own ending here. Uh, for the actual series, but I really like that the DLC ends with the idea that, you know, especially the Corvian in the in the town that says like we do this right, unlike those people, those fools from out the outside, and he's exactly correct. We can't figure out how to get to the Age of Man ever. Like we completely ruined it when Gwyn did his first. I mean, this is my prediction that Gwyn thing caused the undead curse which is what caused which caused all the problems i believe that it's definitely a possibility that we don't get to the age of dark ever we never got to the age of man like not only were people reuniting the flame but like we like it, the world physically can't get to the age of dark it will go the age of fire the extended age of fire and then this kind of this death you know, this like, uh, this cursed state forever until someone eventually reignites the flame. It's all because of Gwyn's original actions. Yet in this storyline, it kind of implies here that once we have the blood of the Dark Soul, like the real true Dark Soul, um, we can create the first world of Dark. And that like like as I said the Corvian said they do it right here and this will be the first age of dark it'll be cold and dark and gentle place for humans and potentially pygmies and Corvians alike so I really like that I wonder when Uncle Gale intends his return I hope the new painting will be to him a gentle home nope my thanks Ashen one, I will assuredly finish the painting of a cold, dark, and very gentle place. One day, it will make someone a goodly hope. So yeah, that's my like, I don't know, interpretation lore of that or whatever, so. All right, so now, um, we're done. I mean, there's only one other thing to do here, and that is to beat the final boss of the game, which, you know, um, where would that be? Flameless Shrine. <coughs> I guess I didn't, um, I probably didn't light the... So yeah, this is the kiln of the first flame. That was correct. Um, I always go up the wrong way here. So if this is the same first flame, by the way, there's this, and that will get you to the drag heap. Actually, we're gonna do that. <coughs> I forgot that there is a story element here. So the first thing that we see here is that this pilgrim died, and that now there exists an angel 
in her like I believe because we saw that the pilgrims created the angels or whatever that that is her and that's what the pilgrims want to do I don't know why they want to do that um Things have dread that have dreadfully run their course accrue at the great drag heap. This old woman was once the wet nurse of royalty. So apparently that was Emma. We should look and see if Emma has a ring on her finger. Which means that you know because all the pilgrims were all leading up towards Emma. In the in Lothric. Hmm. That's interesting. I guess we'll probably look it up. It's probably the same voice actors. And it should have been uh, obvious, but. Iron balls. Crochet and iron balls. All right, let's go do this. I hope there's nothing else I need to do to uh, do the final ending I want. So he takes the coiled sword out of the bonfire and he comes to attack us. And he fights us with the coiled sword, which is cool. But he, the also, the implication that I like about this fight a lot is Iron Ball's really having an issue here. Is that he changes now his instrument. Now he's like a sorcerer. I like this spell too. Now he changes it to a spear, which by the way is my least favorite uh, when you're fighting him alone. So it implies that he's all the Lords of Cinder that came before him, and then of course at the end here he turns into uh, Gwyn. And I don't know if you can uh, parry him like Gwyn, and then you can hear Gwyn, well you probably can't hear it, because I can barely hear it, and yeah there's his sunlight. But, yeah, there's the kick. I mean, this is exactly Gwyn's fight. I mean, it's a cool touch. But we already fought Gwyn. Alright. Oh boy, iron balls. Wow, that was totally unavoidable. Okay, come on, let's do this. What was that? Ugh. like Manus actually. Or I guess uh, I guess Gwyn did that. I just didn't do that in my most recent playthrough of him.
that can hit you like way across the map. Ooh. I just have like two hits. Come on, man. Ugh, so badly timed. Pfft. Yeah, just get out. Soul of Lords. Which surprisingly doesn't have good lore on it. <coughs> Since Lord Gwyn, the first Lord of Cinder, many exalted lords have linked the first flame, and it is their very souls that have manifested themselves as defender of the flame. Yeah, well. So, how do you usurp? Um, I might have to look that up. The other thing that we want to do here is that we want to um, get all the weapons from all the souls that we've been getting. Uh, but let me let me look this up. <coughs> um, kills and it touch the fire. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just touch the fire and then do the ending and then, uh, we will just go back. I hope this is it. They better didn't trick me into, uh, linking it when I didn't want to. Is it because I'm... I have like the things that I can just take it instead of like burning it. Nice. So there's no the Sun is now white instead of like flame red. I see the sable church is probably Uria and Lillian because. So yeah, that's uh, Dark Souls 3. Um, um, I mean, I... You know, I... I, <coughs> I feel like we, you know, have this conversation after every game here. The whole series is interesting, and it's all worth existing and stuff. They all have their strengths and their downsides. And, uh, I gotta say, I, this playthrough of Dark Souls 3 really gave me a lot more love for it. You know, like, I, I definitely could see what was, uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna turn this down here for a second. Um, but, you know, like, I, I can't say that, like, oh, Dark Souls 1's definitely my favorite, or, because, like, I don't know, like, I really enjoyed playing 2 this time around, too. I enjoyed playing all of them, um, in their own ways, and, uh, and they all have their all cool connections to the main story, and... You know, nothing's clear-cut, it's not, like, the most clear narrative, and that was the whole point of the original, you know, story. I mean, there's also Demon Souls, which also has this really cool, like, you know, story about a god and stuff like that, whether it exists or not. And, you know, I feel like that kind of got played out differently in um you know dark souls itself um mainly through like um logan's storyline or whatever to talk about that but you know it, it's it's such a dense densely populated um you know story and universe and world and stuff and it doesn't all quite make sense and it goes back on itself and it spans times and 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 even like dimensions and you know with heroes phasing in and out as uh, Soler told us and with red herrings and trolls and things and whatever um taken as a whole i think it's one of the best stories like the best not even the best stories like if you had if you wrote this down it would be not uh, not remarkable, I don't think. I mean, it is... It's cool. There's some cool stuff there. But, like, I think that, you know, it its strength is in the way it tells its story, obviously, uh, which is, I think, unique to Dark Souls for now. And to maybe a handful of other mediums as supplementary. But I think that um, it's unique and it's in its way that it, you know, presents this entire story from the beginning and how it loves to contradict itself for the purposes of the narrator, uh, I was reading, purposes of the story, of the narration, of the, um, I want to see if, so Emma, well, I just seen Stone Hump Haggis, Cyan Thomas, I didn't see Emma. Um, but I guess you can rewind it and see, um, but, um, I, I just think taken together, it's an amazing feat and it definitely has grown stale, um, and it needs to kind of get into the next, uh, like we, like I, I would have agreed to Dark Souls 1 and nothing else. I would have agreed to Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne, and then something else. Um... I think the fact that Dark Souls 2 and 3 came <coughs> are the less ideal choice for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but um, the fact that they are here, um, I think there's a lot of real good stuff that they've done. So still worth the time and still worth recording and uploading because, I don't know, I think it, uh, there's some cool thoughts to be had from going through all of the, the minor stories in here and all the minor theories and, <coughs> sorry for the cough, I thought we would be good. I guess I'm talking a lot here at the end, so I'll just skip the rest of this and we will go straight to reading the rest of the items. Um, be in Journey 2 in current state, or Journey 2 can be initiated from the Shrine Bonfire if you do not wish to begin now. Uh, no, not begin. It is weird that we usurp the fire, and now it's like, do you want to start again? Like, the mechanic of the game is such that...
ist das jetzt Walze? Wo sitzt der Hund denn? Gott kennt seine unlöslichen Mühen. Da geht er zu seiner Ruhe. A fine night, I'm sure, you know. There is little I love more than a good deal of love, so. I guess the other thing we can do is kill everyone. So we'll have a we'll have a good long episode here. But first let's read all of these things. Um Madeir. So he has the old moonlight sorcery, which is uh new. <laughs> Um, but it's based off of Seath saying, obviously. A memory of an old sword found deep within Madeir. This sorcery uses souls to grant form to the thought and attack with it. <coughs> the sword is named after Moonlight, but it is slightly different than the one fashioned of the Pale Drake Seath. Perhaps it is rooted in an older memory from not long after the beginning. I mean, yeah, the Moonlight Greatsword was part of the tale of Seath. I mean, it's not like he created it or anything. Demon Prince. The last flame lit by the Demon Prince. This pyromancy hurls a clump of chaos. Upon impact, this clump of chaos seethes wildly, condenses briefly, then explodes violently. To the demons, these clumps are shreds of life. Miracle of Gwyn, the First Lord. The tales of Gwyn's arch dragon hunts describe the inception of the Age of Fire. Of course, right next to the Nameless King, where he tamed a Stormdrake. Great wood. The Lords of Cinder linked the first flame, and this great sword was wielded by their deific manifestation. This coiled sword, found thrust in the bonfire, exists long before the Throneless Lords themselves. Of course, we used to make the bonfires out of them. And it has the same skill as the Ring City ones. Which is interesting because this was there before the Ring City content was there. So I like that little touch. Great Sword of the Slave Knight Gale. The only weapon that he kept with him from beginning to end. Originally an executioner's sword made for decapitation. This blade is heavily chipped and stained with the blood of countless battles. A precarious technique unique to Undead Gale. Leap in any direction, slamming the great sword to the ground, then follow with a normal attack for a large spinning slash or strong attack to backstep and jump forward into an overhead slam. That's cool. Demon Prince. This chaotic thing, the last flame kindled by the demon prince, is shaped like the claw marks of a demon. It is both a fiery bladed weapon and a pyromancy flame. A dragon weapon symbolizing Dark Eater Madeir. The once exquisite blade is now stained black and frayed at the hilt. Without its sheath, it will soon crumble into nothing. But it's a... Yeah, it's a dex weapon. It's a katana. Uh, did we read these? Yeah. Yeah. This crossbow, customized for repeat firing to face mobs alone, was wielded by Slave Knight Gale, used in battles of an endless journey. Uh, this crossbow is covered with twists and dinks, rusted with blood, and made extremely brittle from overuse. And I think that's it. Okay. I wish Ludleth was alive. So we could talk to him about stuff. All right, so uh, I mean, we'll kill her first. Then we will kill this one. I mean, I guess we should find their style. Of battle. My lordship, what is the matter? Please stop. My lordship, what is the matter? 
Will she not attack me no matter what? Oh, you know what? I should talk to her. Yeah, we... No, we did. We already did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're... T <coughs> That's weird. Yuri is ashes. Um, having three founders of the Black Church ensured Yuria's legacy would survive. Her two sisters could carry the torch, making certain their lord claims the flame for the sake of all hollows, although that was not true of, of, um, of Frida, Alfreda. Yeah, I don't know how to get these people to fight. Carla's ashes. The spurned child of the abyss never dies, but phases in and out of its fringes. Only there is no one to search for her any longer. I guess I'll take off this so I can like. Okay, I mean, I think we've seen enough. I can't complain. This old reverie had to end. Cornix's ashes. I love that image. Cornix was tired and defeated until he discovered one final pupil like so many pyromancers before him. Oh. <coughs> and we already got all that stuff. Oops. Does he not fight you in this one? Come on. That's a really bad reading, too. So he doesn't drop anything. You can get his stuff normally. Um, who else is there to kill? Um... Killed Emma. <coughs> um, Sigurd, but he's dead. Killed Orbeck, obviously. I mean, there's Rosaria, but she's already dead. Oh, we have to visit uh, Henri. Um, there's no one here. See, I think everyone like comes to the. Oh, Yorshka. Yorshka. Let's kill Yorshka. <coughs> I mean, she might just disappear. I don't know. I mean... Could she possibly fight you? Not this. Thou art no true knight. Okay. 
Okay. Dear brother, forgive me. Yeah, brother, like Gwendolyn, definitely. So there, I don't know. Yorshka's chime. A sacred chime belonging to Yorshka. Her brother, the former knight captain, presented her with this medium together with another gift, her name. The ringing of the chime must have done much to soothe her loneliness. That's cool. Um, I mean, there's this guy. You can't kill Archdeacon McDonnell. Uh, yeah, there's no one in here. No one in there. I mean, I've killed everyone here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess the so lap is dead. The old hag is dead. The other guy we went to, he was gone. We did everything there. So what, what was I going to say? There was just something I figured out. Oh, Henri. I think based on the storyline I've done, she'll be here. I can't believe I haven't done Henri before. Maybe I don't understand her storyline all that well. Uh, she does go up there from time to time. Uh, she could be in the smoldering lake. Which means we're going to go to the smoldering lake. Uh, but I thought she only went here when... Yeah, sorry if this is all, like if I run here and then she's uh, gone. But I thought that she only came here if you were able to go back up and tell... Oh! Pfft. What am I doing? Alright. We killed her. I'm just... I, I never kill her, obviously. So I keep thinking that we'll be able to find her go hollow. But she died. I killed her. So as we can see here that... Uh, We can give her the Eyes of the Firekeeper now, which is cool. Um, but we are going to first go kill Arena. Because she can't die either. Arena's ashes. Oh, and the tower key. Interesting. Is it the same tower key? Yeah. Arena was a frail woman. This frailty led to her becoming a saint of Kareem and to her grand treachery. Hmm. 
not sure what that's referring to. She was a nun. And I mean, I suppose the treachery was becoming a firekeeper, but like, that had very little to do with her as far as I understood. Um, so yeah, the only thing now is give them, give the ashes. So yeah, she just she just says like it's really warm like you clearly killed this person. Oh, and by the way, uh he stays alive but he's mad at you and he will I don't think he repairs or anything. But I like that. Like if you kill him in the whatever, he, he, you just lose the ability to do your weapons, which could be like a, t you know, like a challenge run, kill him, and then like for sure you can't, you know, level up or whatever. Uh, we've read Carla's stuff, maybe not her hat. Yeah, maybe we have, but that's being sold by the handmaiden. Oh, and we should see if she has anything else. Actually, yeah, we should give her all this ash because she could end up selling. I guess she might just sell what they sell, but let's see if there's anything else that we need to read. Yeah, I think these are all, there's, so, I mean, we read all these. Even the ones I bought, like, are that are gone, are gone here, too. Um, okay. No, what are these now? I mean, they, did we read them? Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, because the, the champion's ashes. Oh, Firelink Helm. Helm of the Soul of Cinder, a deific manifestation of the Lords of Cinder who linked the first flame. It resembles a knight's helm, but bears hideous burns and contortions. A misshapen crown can be seen upon its rear. It exists as a symbol of the great lords and the noble act of linking the fire, though it is no more than an empty husk. Yeah. We got the black hand stuff, yeah. Okay, here he is. Attire of the three mentors of the Sable Church of Londor, this build mass belongs to Yuria, the second eldest. These maidens of a primordial serpent were renowned for as founders of the Sable Church, which offered salvation to its followers. Orbeck stuff, yeah, Carla's stuff, all of Carla's stuff. Um, Frida's stuff, and that's it. Oh, couple of rings here. Life ring, saint's ring, yes, wood grain, Lloyd's, untrue, oh, yeah, okay. All right. Thanks for watching my uh, Dark Souls 3 lore through as well. And if you haven't seen it, check out my Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 lore throughs to learn all the little subplots of the whole series. 
um, because I cover absolutely everything. Well, not absolutely everything, but everything I find interesting, which is most things. Um, but that will do it for this episode and for this series. And um, please leave a comment below what you thought about it. And uh, who knows what I'm going to do next, but uh, we'll see. All right, later. Bye.